race. I've been saved by the race. My name is in the book of life and my sins are washed away. Saved by grace. I've been saved by the race. It's not what I deserve, but I'm saved by the race. Hi. I'm Leroy Herring, and this is Not Without Blood. Thank you for joining us again tonight as we study God's Word together. We just ask that you get your uh, notepad, your Bible, and uh, get you a cup of coffee or whatever. Relax. We hope we challenge you because teaching is part of stretching and learning. You know, you would have never graduated or been promoted from the first grade to the second grade when you were going to school unless you were challenged and prodded and prompted in the first grade to expand your learning to expand your knowledge this is one thing that we want to do is to present to you things that may challenge you that may expand your thinking but biblical based topics that uh, will lead us in a closer relationship to God will lead us by the Spirit to the Father instead of by the uh, demonic Spirit leading us to man. <clears throat> we have uh, been discussing uh, uh, the unscriptural topic of covering that we hear so much about on Christian TV today. Uh, who is your father? Who is your daddy? Who is your covering for our ministry? Who, who covers you? Well, you cannot find any scriptural basis for that unless you twist the scripture. The only scriptural covering that we have is the propitiation of Christ, the uh, atoning work of Christ, His finished work. It's always about who He is and what He did. And when we get away from who He is and what He did, that's a road map to error. It's a road map to uh, a perverted gospel. So, again tonight, I'd like to welcome our guest. Uh, on your left is Dr. Michael Lee, uh, joining us again uh, from Destin, Florida. Uh, to his left is uh, Alan Abayan de Guzman, and to my right is uh, Presley Watson, and we just welcome them again as we continue to study this topic. We left off on last program talking about Adam and his covering. His covering was the righteousness of God. His covering was God's righteousness all over him. When he submitted <clears throat> that covering to the enemy, he had to go for a natural covering. He had to go something that was not godly in that God uh, did not want that to be his covering. God wanted the righteousness of God to always be the covering of, of man. When we get away from that and we put man as our covering or as our mediator, when we look to him for spiritual advice instead of to the counselor, when we look to him for give me your anointing or impart your anointing to me, hello, instead of God giving me my own anointing, which he will do, uh, we're getting on a ground of a perverted gospel. We're getting on something that God cannot honor our faith in that, cannot honor our work in that. So, you know, am I going to try, am I going to be covered with the righteousness of God through his blood, through the finished work of Christ, or am I going to have me attempting to cover myself with a bunch of fig leaves and, and that's all it amounts to. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit in my notes a little bit and I'm going to make this statement. If I cannot draw a straight line of my covering for me or my ministry that God has entrusted to me straight back to the finished work of Christ, then I am outside the gospel. Another is that gospel. true? Another gospel. Is that true? I'm so I marvel. Paul I'm said, mar I marvel that you so soon removed from him that called you right. to another gospel. Right. He wasn't talking about a doctrine at that point. Uh -uh. He was talking about putting yourself 
Because he goes on to say, do I please men? Right. Or do I please God? So he's talking about men pleasers. Right. Putting yourself under these teachers that are teaching you these and, uh, other and gospels. And, and Paul made very clear, as we have on previous uh, edition, that he was called of God, not of man. Not of man. And you know, I like to say this for all of my legalistic friends out there, and I've got plenty, I've got family, okay, that, <laughs> that are still associated in some of these doctrines that preach that you can go to J.C. Penney's and buy holiness and right. put it on. And I like to say to them that whenever Adam and Eve <laughs> made their garment, God said, that ain't going to work, and right. God made them garments garment. of animal skins, but right. God was the first you know, person who created clothing. Yes. He made garments out of animal right. skins, but it did not negate him having to send his son to die on a cross. Right. Because if the garments would have made Adam holy, we wouldn't have needed Jesus. Wouldn't have needed wow. Jesus. So even God, God couldn't make clothes that would make you holy. Right. So I like to pass that on to you. But it was to cover up a nakedness that they were not even aware of as long as they were connected to the Father. Right. Because the righteousness of God covered them. So when I, when I get out from under His righteousness, I start seeing my flaws. I, I see my nakedness. Uh, yes. It's just what and Preston if, said. And yeah. when I look in the mirror, I ain't pretty. <laughs> the right I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> And I can't change myself either. No matter how many times I speak to that mirror, you know, my hair's still white. It's got to and reflect what's there. <laughs> it, 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 you know, I, I can't speak to that mirror and keep speaking to it and, quit, and keep on quoting to it and change myself. I can't change my spots. Right. Uh, and God knows all of them, but only He can change my spots. Right. But I can't, I can't change those. Uh, Personally, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is the root to all of this is that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right. which is self-righteousness. Right. Um, and that, that's, that's the beauty of being under Christ and under grace is now we're not sin conscious anymore because we believe. We believe that our sins have been washed away. We're not sin conscious, but we're Christ, we're Christ conscious. conscious. Well, a, a lot of that is a lot of people look at the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. And they say, as long as I do good, mm -hmm. that's all right. right. But the knowledge of the tree, and, and don't do the evil. If I do the good and don't do the evil, I'll be all right. But the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, either one of them led you to death. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Either one of them had death. The knowledge of the tree of good and evil produced death. Right. It doesn't matter. So one of the things we have to get rid of when we come to Christ is our goodness. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. right. It's not in us. And the tree of life that's there is just like the tree of knowledge takes you to evil. You know, good and evil right. takes you to death. Right. The tree of life takes you to eternal uh, sustenance or eternal life. Right. And God had to guard and protect them from that tree because it would have kept them in a perpetual state of sin right. had they partaken of the tree of life with a sinful condition, it would have it would have perpetuated where they were. He had to keep them from that until he could atone for their sin, and then we can partake of the tree of life. Wow. And so that that's why it was so important from even back then, and we can take almost every temptation and almost every false doctrine and almost everything that comes against the church today, and we can go to the garden of God right. and we can find it right yes. there. That right was there. how Satan tried to do it from the beginning, right. Right. because as the twig is bent, so grows the tree. Right. If he can take you out in your infancy, if he can stop you when right. you're that when you're young, he's going to try to do it at that at that point. At that know? point, that's that was a that is a prime example of how the enemy will definitely try to come in and pervert the gospel from the very beginning. And then man shows his natural inability by trying to sew fig leaves together to cover mm -hmm. up what shouldn't have even been exposed. Right. Right. And then God has to come along and and do it all for us. And again, they had to resubmit themselves to God. Which right. is where we're all, hopefully, we're all headed back to. Even if you, your takeaway from this teaching that we're given, your takeaway needs to be I am responsible for my life, for my walk with God. Right. I have to look to Him who is the author and the finisher of my faith. Mm -hmm. And I have the power, I have the, the giftings, I have everything that any other man on this planet has. It's all available to me as well. You're complete in Christ. Absolutely Amen. in Christ. Amen. And, and Colossians tells yes. us. Colossians chapter right. two tells me I'm completely right. We are fixed. Christ. We're established. We're settled. Right. We're settled. <laughs> and there is therefore now no condemnation right. to them which are in Christ Jesus, and not to them that are covered by a man. Right. There's right. condemnation yes. from right. that. Right. But when you're in Christ Jesus, the condemnation's gone. And so, as Alan pointed out on the last broadcast, 
if you're feeling condemnation because of this, or if you're a pastor and you've been preaching this, and you've been on, just quoting stuff off the top of your head because you believe, take a moment and study it out. Right. Take a look at what's being said. Avail yourself of mm-hmm. these um, these series of DVDs which are available right. to you. And, and, and learn this and study this and grow and add to it whatever God reveals to you to take you on the path of righteousness that you need to be. And you know, if you know somebody also, they already, others have not watched the first session, first uh, subject that we did uh, mm-hmm. a few weeks ago, uh, session, you know, invite them, you know, get, get a hold of the CD. So, right. so, you know, because this is a series, so right. this may be second to the last. It's very important that, because we said a lot of things that you didn't hear today, you know, or tonight. Right. And so get a hold of those and get your friends, your pastors. And, and uh, you know what? Sometimes, you know, we say the truth will set you free. But the best thing to do is if you want to really be free in the natural, get away from that teaching mm-hmm. and get a hold of the right teaching, right. which is the gospel of grace, the, the, right, the righteousness, that you're important. You, you're, not, you're not, you know, fear, torment kind of preaching that if you don't submit there's something will happen to you you yeah, know God will you, judge you it will judge you you mm-hmm. lose that child and, and there's some kind of disease yeah you know you, you your generation never had diabetic and you'll have diabetic or mm-hmm. vice versa your generation had diabetic died diabetic or cancer you'll die yourself as well this wrong teaching is not in the word of God right. it is not in the word of God it's a finished work of Christ it's a done deal it, it is finished it is Absolutely. finished the truth so will make you, you don't free. Have, Exactly. The truth is a person. Yes. The truth is a person. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So you're exactly right. The finished work is in Christ Jesus. Right. And, and the right. deception with that covering is the teaching, if you get out from under this covering, God will judge you, Satan will crush mm-hmm. you. You have no power. And right. see, that, that goes against the whole gospel because on the cross, Christ absorbed all the judgment. Woo! And there's none left. No that's condemnation. Exactly. No judgment. That's Romans chapter 5, verse 9. The wrath of it fell on him. Mm-hmm. And that's it. It's, it's, it's done deal. I, I think we need to go back and, and regress a little bit and make a little bit clearer something that we touched on in a previous episode is the doctrine of don't come against God's anointing. Yes. Mm-hmm. And a little bit more clear on that. It, it, under a New Testament covenant of the covenant of grace, we are all anointed. God's anointing. Right. So we cannot say don't come against God's anointing because every child of God is God's anointing right. and we're all equal. That's right. What's your take on that? You're exactly right. The Bible tells us He anointed us to be kings and, and priests. priests. Right. Now before that, the king could not be the priest and the Correct. priest could not be the king. And that's what got Saul in trouble when he tried to offer the sacrifice right. and didn't wait for Samuel. All of that stuff happened because Saul stepped into the New Testament. Right. And God had to judge that because right. he stepped out of the type and shadow. Right. And so Jesus He destroyed came, the type. Exactly what he did. And Jesus comes along and says, Now he's also going to be he's going to be the king, king and, and the, the priest. priest. And he's going to make us kings. He's anointed us to be kings and priests. Right. And there are no second level priests. No. There's not a tier of priests. A priest or equal we're brothers. In Christ, the Bible says Christ, Jesus thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He turns around and calls Whoa. us His brother. Right. So that's it's horizontal, as you pointed out right. weeks ago. It's horizontal that our, our, our accountability is horizontal. Everything that we do here is <laughs> is brother to brother. I don't have right. to look up to a man and and think that this man is somehow over me or superior in in, in God to me. There can be people who've been saved for forty years and be Im- more immature than somebody who gets saved for six months right. yes. and dives yes. Yes. into the Word of God yes. and like I said in a previous broadcast with a broadcast, fresh mind who had no idea that I didn't have a father in ministry and I was having miracles, signs, wonders, book of Acts ministry I mean we were going about doing things I could take some time to tell you the miracle after miracle I'm not I'm talking just about fingernail biting demons and stuff I'm talking about people who was raised from the dead I'm talking about children who was brought out of their mother's womb that was dead in the womb that was brought back to life again and Thing, time after time and miracle after miracle, things like that that were happening, documented, verified. Eardrum, woman born without an eardrum gets healed and comes back with a paper from a doctor saying this eardrum was not there a week ago. Mm. Okay, mm. those kind of things. And then I was told, you can't do that. You don't have covering. Right. So that's what I'm. That's that's the whole point. That's the seriousness of it. You wow. be so wow. careful. T- taking away <laughs> gifts given wow. to the body of Christ and trying to destroy him is is the devil's. Yeah work to destroy 
something that was made to benefit the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it can't happen. You know, if, if we look at Peter, you know, Peter would ask, have to ask, who called him? Did man or God call mm -hmm. him? And then, Peter, who gave you the anointing to do the calling that he gave him? And this is how ministries get put under coverage. Mm -hmm. uh, who owns the ministry? <clears throat> if I say I own Crossway Ministry, then I will not mind putting it under another man ministry mm -hmm. because I do not cherish the calling and the anointing from God and I do not keep it under Him and so being it's mine mm -hmm. I can do with it what I want to and I, I don't have any problem putting it under another man because he's doing the same thing and I want his recognition his mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> his uh, people him telling people how great that ministry is over there, mm -hmm. you know, recognition. Uh, <clears throat> but if I if I take ownership of my ministry, if I take ownership of something, I don't mind giving it away. If I don't recognize that it is of God and by God and of the Holy Spirit and by the Holy Spirit, I'm going to cherish that and I'm not going to give it to man. I'm not going to let That's man so get his dirty hands on it. You remind me of something that's just, this is fresh and it's not pain talking, it's just fresh. This is how, even when you don't believe in this, how it can affect you. Mm -hmm. uh, recently in, in our city, we have a situation where my wife was approached to, to do, matter of fact, the Lord spoke to her that morning and said, I want you to host a women's conference. And she went to another lady and, they, and God had spoke to her the same thing. Big conference. They started putting it all together. And the pastor who nine months before that had had, had a problem with the covering thing. <clears throat> He says basically to them, if you don't use this woman, I will put you, I'll announce it on my big screens in our church for 3,000 people there twice on Sunday. And your women's conference will have all this recognition. But you can't use somebody who's not covered with local church protocol. Because <coughs> you know? right. when they found out that there was the umbrella of covering, then it wasn't good enough. You have to be covered by a local church because we've got to understand local church protocol, right. which local church is not even mentioned in the Bible. By right. right. But. Because God doesn't have a local church. Everywhere's local. It's a man -made. Everywhere's if you're local. standing in the Philippines, it's local to the Philippines. It's local. <laughs> I mean, it's foreign missions to me, yeah. but it's local yeah. to them. It's local so, to them. <laughs> so it still affects you to this very day because when men begin to do this, they're so, they get so involved in the control aspect of it that they cannot be wrong. Right. They're so right. empowered they can't be wrong. And so they will, they will literally try to squelch and start putting down people that is a threat Mm. to their ministry. Okay. It's an insecurity and a fear of releasing right. people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it all goes back to fear. Yeah. It always goes back to you know, fear. The Bible says, you know, the same two verse next to each other. Paul says, uh, uh, stir up, you know, mm -hmm. fan the flame. That's what a leader is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. The next verse, verse 7, it says, For God has not given a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound so, mind. So there's no, those three things, mm -hmm. it's fear. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's what torments people. Right. And then it holds them back from their calling, from their gifting, from their talents, from their potential, mm -hmm. you know, that they have not discovered, not even one, how much more, two, more that God will deposit to them before the creation. Mm -hmm. And why? Because of a leader has controlled them, manipulated those four things that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So how many thousands of churches preaching this to their congregation in each of them. I like what you said, uh, Dr. Mike, while ago, there's three things could affect in your life, mm -hmm. spirit, soul, and body. You know, I never thought about that. It, it, it's, it's happening. And sometimes we wonder, we pray and nothing happened. Well, because that spirit has Come never right. been addressed. That's right. those, those anointed, called by God, are preaching a wrong doctrine, wrong teaching, mm -hmm. you know, and so it is, and it's multiplying. Generation to generation to come. Why? Why we were a victim? Because who taught us we're a victim? Mm -hmm. So it motivates, it begets and begets and begets, and, <laughs> and so it's time to draw the line and say, enough. I want the truth to set me free. Well, what would happen to any church and ministry if if the leader would release the people, would um, not limit freedom of choice, but expand it to the people? You know, it, it's it's really you know we we get so insecure. That, we go um, back to the Acts 
church. Yes, we we, we the Lord will add it to their numbers. Yeah. Right. So we we, we right. began to strip the people and tell them, now you must submit to my vision. Right. And the problem is, ever the the body of Christ is beautiful. That there's many yes. talents, there's I many agree. gifts, there's yes. many callings, and that's what the leader does. He 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 has the discernment. He has the the ability to serve right. and 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 began to release and find the calling in, in the people right. and, and began mm -hmm. to serve and, and help right. them fulfill and it. Could you imagine and today mm -hmm. if the book of Acts was taking place today and then, and Peter and John's you know walking down the street, the layman says, silver and gold. I mean, he says, um, he ex looks upon them expecting to receive something from them. Right. And they said, it. silver and gold have I none, right. such yeah. as I have. Give I thee in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. Today, they would say, Peter, have you been to the new converts class? Mm -hmm. Did you go through the nine-week study course right. on how to heal lame men at the gate? Mm -hmm. did you, right. Did you take right. this course? Did you Woo. did you go through the pastor's wife's class of you know before you're able to go out and do anything in the community? You've got to go through all of these processes. Structure. Right? And we would just we would destroy the miracle to, because to, to represent that, that local church. body right. properly. Right. Right. You can't heal them because you don't have pastor's permission. Right. Now, if you want to heal the lame man at the gate, oh, you've boy. got to go to the small group. Uh -oh. And you've got to become yeah. lame men at the gate healers and get a certificate after nine weeks. Mm -hmm. And then we'll take you out to find lame men for you to heal, mm -hmm. which generally it never gets that far. Right. But that's what I'm saying. The new covenant, I mean, it, it almost sounds like I'm being, I'm trying to make fun of them. I'm really not. It's sad. Yeah. It's right. really sad because right. the truth is, we're at church at 10 o'clock on Sunday because we know that's where we both, we're supposed to be. We're yeah. not there because God woke us up and yeah. drove us into that, that place. It's, it's like the body's out of joint. You know, we're not, <laughs> well, we're, we're not functioning properly because we're not plugged into right. our passion right. and gifting. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. Yeah. Agree. And, and, and that, that's what happened to me is I got out of my passion what God's called me to and it become a dead work. You no never joy, substitute, no life. you never yield up your passion for protocol. That's right. it, yeah. You never do it. Never and, give up passion. And a leader right. under grace, he that, that's what he does. He finds the passion and finds the calling. And, and right. he trusts God and trusts the people to release them in that. You know, a verse that uh, <clears throat> some people will use and talk about is in Ephesians 4, uh, talking about the ministry, gifts, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, right evangelists, some people call them the ascension gifts, some people call them different names. Five-fold ministry. Five ministry, right, ministry of grace. But those those ministries, hear me child of God, those ministries are never set up to have control over man. Mm -hmm. They are set up to have control over demonic spirits. But they are never set up to have control over man. Man is simply to recognize the call of God on somebody else's life. Right. Man is to recognize that call. Uh, he is not to approve it because he can't approve it. He can't. Mm -hmm. And he can't ordain it. Or right. Ordination is of man. That's right. Calling is of God, but ordination is of man. That is man trying to get in on the call of God and then trying to usurp God's authority and, and place his control over the call of God. Mm -hmm. In today's church, Peter would have never preached Pentecost. Right. Mm. Because it had only been three weeks since he royally messed up. Right. And, and had no, to sit down for a year. Uh, two. <laughs> right. and, and go through this, as you mentioned, this course, that course. The, uh, he would have never yeah. mentioned. Application. He could have never preached Pentecost. And had and showed the difference between the message of law when three thousand people died at Sinai and the message of grace when three thousand people were born again when the Holy Spirit came. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just a it, just so much different. If we yield to the wrong spirit, we get a harvest from that seed. Mm -hmm. That's one thing we've got to understand. I believe is that the the plant that we are being nurtured from, nurtured from, the plant that we are eating from, will produce a harvest, won't it? Mm -hmm. it, it won't go by without a harvest. Sure. Sure. It, it will right. produce a harvest. And if we, we got to be careful who we connect ourselves to. Like I said in the previous week, we become what we worship, we become what we lean towards. Right. And I want to talk, and we don't have time on this broadcast, maybe we'll get into it the next time. I want to talk about the, the Father giving you the desires of your heart. Right. Because Jesus spoke to the Pharisees and he said, You are of your father, the devil. Mm -hmm. 
because he could tell by the desire of their heart. Right. Right. And if we start, if you can get out and, 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 and become a part of evil associations and you can get you can get evil desires in your heart. If being around an evil person can create evil desires, how much more being in the presence of God could create the desires of destiny that God wants in you. Mm -hmm. But if you forego all of that and yield it up to a man, that man's going to give you his desire. Yeah. And wow. you're going to basically right. please him and That's do what it. he wants you to do. And, and even if you do branch out, please, you're, you're going to branch out as a satellite of what uh, he's what, doing. What he is. Right. Absolutely. Wow. He, uh, you're going to grow his horns. Yeah. You're going to grow you, his you, you lose your identity in Christ. You, 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 lose, you right. disconnect from the, the gifts, the passions of God, and you just it ends up being dead works. No joy, no life. And it's, like, it's actually like a robot. Right. But, yeah. And we go back to, robot to Galatians 1.6. Yeah. I'm amazed that you are so soon so, removed yeah. from Him. You know, yeah. out from under, they willfully went out from under the covering of Jesus, mm -hmm. the blood of Christ, mm -hmm. and went in for a false doctrine, that uh, false doctrine of works, a false doctrine of circumcision, mm -hmm. that as you had mentioned, I can go purchase my holiness, mm -hmm. which cannot, mm -hmm. that I can wear my holiness, which we cannot. We can have a robe of righteousness put on us according to what Romans five nineteen, where uh, Paul says, you know, you were made the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can be made the righteousness of God. I can right. become the righteousness of God by the obedience of one person. Right. Uh, it says, for by as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. I'm made righteous. By the finished work of God, I, it's not something I earn or wear. It's not something I, I, I've done something so I received a wage for it. It's um, the doctrine, Paul's doctrine of imputation, that I imputed with His righteousness when He bore my sin. And again, Jesus did not become a sinner; He just bore my sin. Uh, whole another teaching. Uh, won't get into that. But I hope we challenge you again tonight. We're going to uh, have, have a, we're going to discuss what uh, Michael said on, on the next program of, of the desires of the heart, and, and we'll try to conclude the, the series with that. But I hope you join us, and and I hope you uh, want a copy of the DVDs. They'll be made available where you can uh, watch and rewatch. And uh, we just thank you for watching Not Without Blood. Not Without Blood has been brought to you by the donations of the Crossway Ministry sponsors. If you'd like to join our sponsors in support of our ministry, contact us at 256-227-5777. We invite you to join us each and every study to grow in the knowledge of the finished work of Christ. Once again, that number is 256-227-5777.